Howdy folks, Tex Grebner here with Tex Grebner Outdoors. Hope you guys are ready to make it weird because it is almost time for Illinois archery season 2019. I am a combination of super excited and super terrified because this could be the year that I break the whitetail curse. Trad life, sad life, struggle stick, whatever you want to call it. I'm excited and I'm also terrified and there's also a hell of a lot of stress that goes into trying to set up cameras, get everything taken care of, and at the end of the day, these are wild animals that we're talking about here. I have hunted high fence and that has its own set of challenges, believe it or not, but when you're dealing with wild and free majestic creatures like the whitetail, you never know what's going to happen on a hunt. And so, as I've said, I am super excited, but I'm also dreading opening day because it only comes once a year and it is a complete anticlimax of a year's worth of just dreaming, plotting, and scheming from the end of the season. So I hope that you guys are going to enjoy this week's episode of Tex Grebner Outdoors. If you want to support the channel, you can go to TexGrebnerOutdoors.com, check out the Make It Weird sticker make it weird shirt, the life ain't like the pornos, hunting ain't like the TV show shirt, because by God ain't that the truth, and of course, the kill with stick shirt. Hopefully this year, I will break the white tail curse, and I will kill with sticks. If you guys are looking for a discount on your traditional archery supplies, you can go to threeriversarchery.com and use the discount of text grab near in your checkout, and it will give you a discount on your shipping because every little bit helps. I am incredibly grateful to everybody that has bought my merchandise and incredibly grateful to Three Rivers Archery for sponsoring this channel. Now, if you guys are looking for a reason to start a fitness journey or if you're looking for a reason to continue a fitness journey, you don't have to be in good shape to be a good hunter. But the truth is, as a hunter, you will never regret being in good shape. And so I strongly recommend you check out traintohunt.com. Check out their programming, check out their merchandise, and make sure that you find dates and qualifiers for the Train to Hunt National Championships because it can be life-saving, it can be life-changing, and I hope to meet you guys one of these days that are Train to Hunt National Championships. That would be super exciting for me to motivate you guys to actually get involved in the train to hunt movement because these are real people with real stories. And as I've said, you don't have to be in good shape to be a good hunter. You will never regret as a hunter being in good shape. After all, in this video, you're going to see me do some tree stand acrobatics by the time that it's over with. So hope you're going to enjoy this week's episode of Tex Grebner Outdoors because Illinois Archery Season 2019 is almost here and I'm terrified. Well, this episode is starting out pretty wily coyote. Tried to do a backyard segment, but naturally one camera wasn't charged up, so I couldn't do some wicked cool picture-in-picture -picture shooting arrows in the backyard. But I went ahead and filmed anyways, only to find out that halfway through that portion of the video that the batteries were dead in my microphone receiver. And of course, it's a nice day at the end of summer, so everybody and their brother and their cousin has their motorcycles out, so go me. So. Right now, I'm driving out to the pasture, got a trail camera to put in. I have not bothered with putting out any food plots this year. We got the crops in the ground super late. Well, everything is still beautiful and lush. I'm covered in spider webs and spiders right now. That hill is going to be a muddy bastard come season, but... I can't put my climbing rope in here until we get the cows out because I don't want them getting tangled up in it. Didn't bother to put a food plot in here this year. 
mostly because the cows will tromp it out and as I said a food plot's going to be a waste of money this year because we got the crops in so late and of course I have to live in real life and hunt when I can but I also basically get to hunt more than anybody's got a right to because my job description is kind of what I would call goddamn cowboy I show up when I wake up and I leave when I'm done now the deer cross the creek and come here and this brush here funnels them down now right back here I've got a ground set up now I did have a tree stand on the other side of this clearing but they were always hugging this and it just is further than what I was wanting to shoot and I actually missed a deer standing right here from a tree stand over there now dealing with the cows obviously I'm not putting on my camera arms onto this spot here because as you can see the cows are in here for the shade but I'm hopeful that that's going to be a perfect ambush if I get a good wind to bring the deer right on past me and the truth is that this has been a long-range scouting process of basically zeroing in one click at a time to actually figure out the travel routes of the deer around the property now under this evergreen tree I've got another little stand set up here because the deer walk the cow trails and down there is the creek here is the fence row and that fence row is the bane of my existence because they're normally on that side of it but if they come from the opposite side of the fence come in and then cross the creek this fence funnels them right past that tree now right there is a tree that I used to have a stand on that I missed a deer out of and so I think I'm gonna set my trail camera right here on this fence post and hopefully the cows don't beat the shit out of it because I've had them ruin trail cameras before pretty much my entire hunting strategy of zeroing in click by click has been based around the fact of figuring out where the deer are organically going to be traveling here you can see where the cattle and the deer have cut into the bank and over there you can see where they've cut into the bank and they cross right here now this is a plan that's just dumb enough to work because I realize that I'm pretty exposed here and that's ridiculously close but if a deer comes this way I'm screened by foliage until they're in the middle of the creek where I should be able to get a good shot off and if they come this way I should be screened as well I've got good foliage here behind me and as long as there is shade as long as there's leaves on the trees I should be in the shadow and be able to get a shot off but like I say it's a plan that's just dumb enough to work but with hunting you never really know well this has been another wily coyote day of production where nothing seems to have gone right get on Amazon buy a headset microphone because I don't like running a collar microphone because I don't wear collared shirts and that makes routing my mic wire very difficult get it in the mail today come out here try and make a video with it find out that the mic rubs on my shirt when I'm actually shooting go me at which point I came up with an idea that's just dumb enough to work if I hook my lapel microphone onto my hat brim run it over my ear and down my back into my pocket well then problem solved of course I didn't learn this until I actually tested the other option and spent money on it 
Going back to grizzly sticks mostly this season because I want to be able to use lighted knocks. And they're a good arrow. I love northern barefoot and day six arrows and day six components. But I've already got these set up for running a 300 grain broadhead and a lighted knock. I'm not using lighted knocks right now. And we've got a mascot down there for the wily coyote-ness of the production. That's a Delta McKenzie coyote target, mostly because it's what I can afford. You would think that with as fast as I can wear out targets that I'd be a much better shot than what I am. But also, that coyote's body size is pretty accurate to what a whitetail actually is. I find that most 3D whitetail are very optimistic in their body size. So, we've got motorcycles and semis on the road, cicadas, but at least the dragonflies are out after the mosquitoes. And I'm gonna try and shoot a decent group here. Now, I'm actually not a huge fan of shooting groups to begin with because I feel like it's only your first shot that counts. Well, I should just quit on that one while I'm ahead. A little bit high on that one. Now you can be, or I should say, you can look as good as you want, or you can be as honest as you want when you're the one that's actually running the camera. So, I'm not here to bullshit you about my ability. And I'm still getting familiar with these arrows. Now, I tell you what's actually really funny is people always talk about, oh, you got to follow through. Well, an ironic observation of mine is. If you follow through on a whitetail and he's ducking your string, you're probably going to shoot right over him. Because I made three perfect shots last year and missed three deer because I followed through. But I'm also of the unpopular opinion that when you've got 20 pigs on a feeder underneath of you, or you've got a deer in front of you. Your iron mind is gonna kiss my ass. You're not going to know what the hell you're doing until it's all over and done with. With all due respect, I think very highly of Joel Turner, but we can lie to ourselves all we want. We're all badasses in our own backyard. Group starts out pretty good. Still pretty all right. Let's see if I can go for the triple crown. Well, they're not all touching, but for a group that I'm talking to the camera, that's pretty all right. Oh, and by the way, I'm also using a Selway quiver this year. I didn't used to be a fan of using a bow quiver, but I took this quiver to Oklahoma and hunted hogs with tripper with it, ran it the whole train to hunt season, and the main reason why you haven't seen an actual review on this Selway quiver is because I like to have credibility on what I'm talking about, and I want to make sure that I know a product's going to hold up. Well, I learned my lesson about using my expensive cameras after I broke a viewfinder, so I've got the GoPro out here working on an adventure project. Got the rangefinder as well. As you can see, I've got a camera mount mounted on this tree stand, mostly because I don't have to worry about the cows bucking it around, because 
we're 15 foot off the ground you see that little dished out trail where it's broke down into the bank the cows and the deer use that I've seen the biggest buck of my life use this very trail should have killed him but I had my hand on my camera mount instead of my bowstring and the very next day when he came back he was 23 yards and I didn't want to take that shot because he was walking so hopefully he made it through the winter and he got bigger but I know that deer are going to use that trail because they've always used this trail and it's 19 yards to that little brown spot between the two spots of green and as soon as that deer lands on that creek gravel it should be a done deal but then again you never really know but I also know that because deer are going to use this creek crossing here that there's going to be a lot of doe scent come through here that should in theory pull bucks past this tree but we'll see what else kind of adventures and trouble that I can come up with yet tonight I took a ladder off a tree that I don't plan on hunting right now got it moved over here but I'm on the other side of this triple tree here because I wanted to check and see if it would be better or worse to set up over there but I think that this should be all right there's only one problem and that is that I don't really think this tree is ready because it's a little bit too skinny so if there's a good wind I'm gonna get tree sick in this some bitch but it's no dumber than any other plan of mine and as long as I've got foliage left I should be all right just got done with my deer stand acrobatics getting this thing put up and what's really funny is that tree right there I've had a stand on over there I've got a stand on that tree and here I am just waiting for this tree to get a little bit thicker because the creek funnels them that way the brush funnels them this way and eventually this is going to be a hell of a spot so at least I've got a stand hung on it so that as the tree gets older and thicker my straps are going to get tighter and the tree is going to get more stable but the main problem is going to be that when I'm actually up here if a deer does show up trying not to wobble the tree so damn much when I'm actually trying to get my bow into position but like I say I come up with a little bit more mischief and I figured hell it's a nice night might as well work some fell deeds for deer season So, in case you're curious, this is how you level a camera mount if you don't have fancy leveling camera mounts. Because you need to be able to problem solve. Improvisation is one of my most cherished skills. And you only learn how to make shit work when you don't actually have what you need.
So this here is burdock, and it is the bane of your existence, because this sticks to absolutely everything. You go home, you wash your hunting clothes, it gets caught on everything that you put it in the washer or dryer with if you don't pick them all off. And if you get that shit in your long johns, you're going to be the first one to know about it. Let me just tell you, I hate burdock with a passion come deer season. Because once it dries out, it gets all spiky and it's just a royal bastard. So as you can see, I've pulled my trail camera card. I don't know if I've got anything on it other than me walking around in cows. I've got a camera arm on this filming on the GoPro still and as you can probably tell I moved the stand from that section of the tree over to this section of the tree and I'm testing out my camera mount angles with the GoPro it's got a fisheye lens so that's great the only problem is they don't do well in low light so Hopefully, I've got this camera arm out far enough that I can actually get a full picture of what's going on. Probably going to put two cameras on a tree this year like I normally do. I don't know. Ideally, if a deer is ending up by that bush there, should be a done deal. This is only going to be good for early season when there's foliage because when these leaves are off this catalpa tree, it's just going to be over with. I'm going to be way too exposed. But for an early season stand, this tree is finally big enough that I can get away with actually putting a stand on it. So now I'm going to go check the trail camera card and see if I've got anything but cows and me on it. I'm excited like I always am when it comes to getting ready for deer season because opening day only comes once a year. The problem is once it's here and it's already gone, I guess it's a combination of excitement and dread because once it starts, I'm going to be sitting in a tree stand like it's my day job. Well, I hope that that's a good omen. It's likely that I'm going to run a hard camera on the tree, a fluid camera on the tree, and I'm also going to use a headset mount for one of my GoPro sessions, even though they just look goofy as all hell. I've got my stands up. I've got my mounts on my stands for the early season. The cattle are still in the pasture, so that kind of complicates things. But I'm as ready as I'm going to be. Life ain't like the pornos. Hunting ain't like the TV shows. And hopefully this year I kill with sticks. As always, God bless all my sports and of America. Join the NRA to protect your rights. Please come my friends over at 3 Thank you very much to those of you involved in law enforcement and those of you serving in the military. And thanks for watching Tech's Grabbing Your Outdoors.